Looking to implement the camera, microphone, location, or any other native feature in your React Native app? You will need the right permissions, or your features simply won't work. Stick around till the end, and I'll show you how to set it up cleanly for both iOS and Android. Hey devs, welcome back. Today, we're diving into how to request and manage permissions in your React Native app using the React Native Permissions Library. Whether you need camera access, location, microphone, or any other native feature, this package helps streamline that across both iOS and Android. Let's get started. First, why we need permissions? When building mobile apps, you often need access to sensitive features like the camera or location. Both iOS and Android require you to explicitly ask the user for permission. And this is where React Native Permissions comes in. It gives you a consistent way to check, request, and handle permissions. So let's jump into the installation. First, we need to run this command, either with npm or with yarn. In this case, we will use yarn. So yarn add React Native Permissions. Let's copy it into the terminal. And while we leave this command running, we will work on the following steps. There are a few for each platform that we need to follow, mainly for iOS. So for iOS, like here says, by default, there are no permissions available. So we need to replace this piece of code in our podpilot file. So let's copy these lines, go to our editor, search for podfile, and this is the code that we need to replace. You can see here in the documentation that we have the resolve react native pods thing, and that's the same that we have here. So let's replace it and remove these extra symbols. We save the file and go back to the documentation. Then on the same file, we are going to paste the following array of permissions. On this, you're going to uncomment the ones that you want to use. In this case, the camera one. So let's bring this into our file, paste it right here and comment the camera permission and save the file. Once we have pasted and uncommented the permission, now we're going to run a pod install command in our iOS folder. And finally, the last step for iOS will be to include the corresponding permission key string into our info.plist file. It should have the key value and a string clarifying why we need the permission from the user. If we don't be clear here with the reason, Apple could reject our app when submitting it to the App Store due to users' privacy. So let's add these tags into our project, opening the info.plist file. We can paste it right here after the false tag. And we're going to say something like, we need access to your camera so you can take and upload your pictures. Save the file and that's all we have to do for the installation on the iOS side. By last, for Android, we just have to paste the corresponding permission tag into our manifest file, in this case, the camera one. So let's quickly open our manifest file we can just paste it over here, save the file, and that's all that we have to do for the Android side. So that's it for the installation. If everything went well, we should be able to run the app on both platforms without problems. Now, let's see how to implement this library. First, let's take a look at the table over here. We have five kinds of results when requesting the permission. Unavailable means that the feature is not available in the device we are trying to access it and we can't request it. Denied means that the permission has not been requested or is denied but still requestable. Blocked means that the permission is denied and not requestable. Usually on this point, we would like to redirect the user to the application settings so they can enable the permission that we are trying to access but manually. Granted, just granted, this is what we want. Unlimited is granted but with limitations. This applies only for iOS and for these specific permissions. Then we have here also some important methods, check for checking the permission status and request for requesting the permission. And these two are for the notifications, check notification request and request notification. And then we have these other two interesting ones for checking and requesting multiple permissions at the same time. By last, 
but not less important, we have the open settings one that is super useful for redirecting the user to the application settings through the device settings. And that's the most essential ones. So let's go to our, our editor and let's implement this. So what I'm going to do here is to copy and paste some pieces of code that we're going to need so that I can focus better on explaining how the code works than typing it. So the first thing we will need here is a function to handle the different status that we get as a result when we check or request the permissions. Based on that result, whether if the permission is denied, blocked or granted or whatever, we will take different actions. So let me paste the following function over here. Let me first import the require stuff over here. We have pay attention here because we the results constant is exported by the React Native permissions library. And this one is super useful because it provides us with the different values that we can get when we request the permissions, unavailable, denied, blocked. So this way is easier to check each case. So then we also have the open settings method we have the request permission also here, but this is a function that we will create, so we can ignore this one right now. And we have the open settings method that we saw in the documentation. This is the one that is super useful for redirecting the user to the application settings. So let's import this one as well. And let's review this function. We just have a switch statement in which we will take different actions based on the result. If it's unavailable, we will just show an alert to the user here. The, the feature is not available and there's nothing we can do. The feature is just not available on the device. If it's denied, we will alert the user saying that the permission is denied and we will ask them to allow it. So we show two buttons, one just to cancel and the other one would be the one that will trigger the request permission for the first time. Like I said, we have to create this function. So let's just ignore this by now. Then if it's blocked, we can't request the permission anymore. So we will just let the user know that they have to go to the settings, to the application settings and enable the permission manually. So we also show two buttons, one just to cancel and the other one will say open settings and we'll redirect the user to the application settings thanks to this method that we have from React Native permissions. Then by last, if the permission was granted, then there's nothing else we need to do. The user can just use the camera without any problems. So we said that we need to create this function called request permission. But first, before that, we will create another one called check permission, because we want to check before requesting the permission, we want to check if the permission was already granted before. So for that, we will let me first comment this out. For that, we will use this method that comes from React Native permissions. This method checks the permission type that we want to access. This can be the microphone, the camera, the location, or whatever permission we want to access. So for that, let me bring this here. We will make use of this permissions constant that is exported from the React Native permissions library as well. So let me give you an example. Let's say that we want to access the location in the iOS device. We will set permissions, iOS, and location. We have always or when you use, but here we have all the possible permissions that we can request from the user. So in this case, we will access the camera either on iOS or on Android. We then pass this value to the check permission method and we wait for the result. The result, as we know, will be unavailable, denied, blocked, granted or limited. So we will send that result to the handle permission status function. And here we will take the corresponding action. Now we're ready to create that request permission function, which will be pretty similar to the check permission one. But instead of checking the permission, in this case, we will request it. And we will send also the same permission type because we want to access to the camera. Let me also comment this out. And with this, we have a complete flow to check. And then based on the current status of the permission, decide if we need to request or not the permission again. And then we also have the request permission function to do that. So let's make a quick recap. We have here the check permission, or we will check the permission, send that current status to the handle permission status. And based on the result, we will take the corresponding action. For example, if it's denied, we know that we will prompt the user to enable the permission. And for that, we need to request the permission with this method we have here. So what we're going to do next is to implement a camera component that will show the camera, the device camera, if the permission is granted. And if it's not, we will show a button that will execute all this flow when the user press on it. We will also show it 
text component so we can see the permission status visually. But let me mention something first. If you want to learn more about how to implement the camera components, let me know in the comments and I will make a video about it. Just take into account that these are two separate things. On one hand, we have the permissions management and on the other hand, we have the camera implementation. And in this video, we're treating only the permissions management. So let me know if you want more details about the camera implementation. That said, let me quickly copy and paste what we need for that. We have the button, we have the camera, which needs an extra little thing over here. We will apply some styles. And by last, we just need to implement the permission status state. So, so let's import the use state. And now we can uncomment the lines that I commented before. This one and this one. So what we are doing here is just that at the moment of checking or requesting a permission, we are storing that status result on our state. And we are using then that state to either show or hide our camera. We will also show that state in the permission status label so we can see visually what is the current status in our application. A quick recap, we have a permission status state variable which we will set when we check or request a permission with the result status and based on that if it's granted we will show a camera component that will show the device camera and if it's not granted we will show a button for the users to request or check the permission. Then by last we will also show a text component so we can visually see the current status of our permission. Now let's run the application and check the results. Okay. So the first thing we will notice when we open the app for the first time is that the permission status label shows no value next to it. That's because the status variable is initially set to null in our code, so no permission has been specified yet. We also have the open camera button available. Now, when we tap this button, we will be prompt with a permission request. Since this is the first time we are trying to access the camera, it will inform us that the camera access is required and ask the user to enable it. We give the user two options here, cancel and allow. If we tap cancel, nothing happens. We don't request any permission, so we are still at the starting point. We haven't triggered any requests yet. If we tap the open camera button again, we will see the same alert. Now, if we tap allow, that's when we trigger the request permission function that we created. Since this is the first time we are requesting the permission, if we then tap don't allow, the permission becomes blocked and the user will need to go to settings manually to enable it. On the other hand, if we tap allow, the permission will be granted, which is the ideal result. That's what we want from the user. At that point, the permission will be granted and we can open the camera and start using it. But let's walk through the rejection case where the user denies the permission. Here, the permission is blocked and the user must go to settings to enable it manually. If we tap cancel on the alert, it just gets dismissed and nothing else happens. Now if we try to open the camera again, we will see that the status label shows blocked, meaning that we can't request the permission again from within the app. Instead, we prompt the user to open the settings and enable it manually. So let's do that. Once we return to the application from the settings, the permission status will now show granted and we're good to go. We can use the camera now. Now that we have successfully implemented, checked, requested and granted the camera permissions in our application, let's quickly review the core of React Native permissions. First, the five permission statuses. Unavailable. The feature isn't available on the device. Denied. Permission hasn't been granted yet, but can still be requested. Blocked, the user denied the permission and it can't be requested again. We need to guide them to settings. Granted, the permission is approved, we're good to go. Unlimited, the permission is granted, but with some restrictions. Then, we have three key methods to handle this. Check, checks the current permission status. Request, triggers the permission prompt and open settings sends the user to the app settings screen when the permission is blocked. And with that, you can create a complete flow. Check if permission is already granted 
if not, request it, and if locked, prompt the user to manually enable it from settings. And that's the core of permission handling in React Native. And again, I invite you to write in the comments if you want to go deeper into related topics like camera, access, or notifications. All right, that's it for this video. I hope this helps you understand how to handle permissions properly in your React Native app. I leave a link to the GitHub repo with the full code down in the description, so check it out and play around with it. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with other devs who might need it. Got any questions or want me to cover a specific permission scenario next? Drop a comment below. I read and reply to all of them. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding!